Well, hello. Back again with the American textbook of prosthetic dentistry by Charles Essig. There we go. Page 32. The mechanical laboratory. It should be remembered that zinc, under favorable conditions, unite with iron, and it frequently attacks the cast iron ladle in which it is melted, and may penetrate the side and escape into the fire. Accidents of this kind are more likely to occur when the ladle is new, and may be avoided by coating the inside with whitening previous to the first melting. The melting of metals, which require very high temperatures, must be necessarily be accomplished in crucibles. They are made of clay with an admixture of silica, burnt clay, graphite, or other infusible material. A crucible should possess the power of resisting high temperatures without fusing or softening. It should also be capable of retaining sufficient strength when hot to prevent its crumbling or breaking when grasped by the tongs. Lastly, it should not crack either in heating or cooling. For the fusing of platinum, which requires the intense heat of the oxyhydrogen flame, they are formed of blocks of thoroughly burned lime. The furnace usually employed shown in figure 113. Well, that's way off over here somewhere. 113. That's way over here. 113. About 100 pages away. 113. 113. 113. I'm making it difficult to find 113. Lots of pages. 112 is way over here. One th ah! Well, there's 112. Let's look at 113. Oh, well, there's 112. Let's look at 113. Why would they talk about 113? Ah, there's 113. <laughs> Way over there on page 131. Whatever. Also serves the purpose of a crucible. In form, it may be de described as a sort of basin or concavity with a similar piece for a cover. The lower part is intended for the reception of the metal. Through the center of the upper portion or cover pass the tubes for the oxyhydrogen jet, while the lower portion is provided with the lip or spout for pouring the melted metal. The tubes which pass through the top for the transmission of the two gases are generally formed of copper with platinum tips. The outer and lower tube carries off hydrogen, while the inner and upper one carries a jet of oxygen into the middle of the flame. The tubes are furnished with stop cocks so that the supply may be regulated. When the object is merely to fuse some scraps of platinum, the lime furnace is First put together, the hydrogen jet is lighted, oxygen is then turned on, and the interior of the apparatus soon becomes heated. The platinum is then introduced in pieces through a small hole at the side and quickly fuses after entering the furnace. The ingot mold, the ingot mold used in casting melted platinum is usually formed of coke or pieces of lime or graphite and the furnace is arranged on centers so that it can be tilted sufficiently to allow the fluid me metal to flow into the mold. The form of oxyhydrogen blowpipe invented by Dr. J.R. Knapp, shown in figure 22, that's figure 22, is a complete and effective apparatus for soldering and melting operations in the dental laboratory. It may be used with equal facility in soldering the largest piece of plate work or the most delicate crown work, and is of particular value to dentists who give attention to continuous gum work, enabling 
and enabling them to readily remelt their platinum scraps. It is provided with an iron stand in which is secured by a thumb screw, a 100 gallon cylinder of nitrous oxide gas. By means of a yoke and set screw, the valve of the cylinder is connected with the tubes and valves of the blowpipe and in such a manner that the proportions of the mixture of nitrous oxide and illuminating the oxyhydrogen hydrogen blowpipe. Proportions of a mixture of nitrous oxide and, and illuminating gases are under perfect regulation and control. A cylinder of nitrous oxide gas is placed in the base or stand and fastened with a thumb screw. A. The yoke carrying the stop cocks and valves is attached to the valve of the cylinder and tightened with a screw. B. The pipe C is connected by a rubber tube to an illuminating gas bracket. When the apparatus is in use, the illuminating gas is turned on and its flow regulated by handle D. The handle G over the outlet, H, is then turned. The cylinder valve is opened by the means of the hand wheel, I, sufficiently to permit the escape of enough nitrous oxide gas to be detected by touching the opening H with the finger. When the desired quantity of nitrous oxide gas is obtained, the flow is directed to the mixture mixing chamber and controlled by the handle G, which when in position, as shown in the cut, allows the gas to pass freely into the chamber K, where it mixes with illuminating gas. Either or both of the burners may be used and the desired flame obtained by regulating the pressure of the gases by the handles controlling them. It is an instrument of much greater delicacy than the blowpipes commonly used by dentists. That's this guy. It's got all the little letters in there, but they're tiny. It's a cool little tail. All right. The flame which is, it affords is very small, but the intensity of its heat is such that great care must be exercising, exercised in soldering small objects to prevent burning, <coughs> or even entire fusion of the parts adjacent to the solder. It is economical of time and materials, and its perfect cleanliness will commend it to all who work in the higher branches of mechanical dentistry. Dr. J.H. Dowie has devised a neat and efficient nitrous oxide blow, page 34, pipe, figure 23, the mechanical laboratory, figure 22. That's his cat. Which is simplified form of the proceeding. The advantages claimed for it are that there is so little force required for the blast that the solder and borax are never blown out of place. <clears throat> and yet the heat is so intense that all soldering operations of the dental laboratory may be accomplished without delay or at least difficulty. And its simplicity prevents any part of it from getting out of order. The coal gas is supplied by connection This coal gas is supplied by connection with one of the tubes shown in the cut and the nitrous oxide to the other. The amount of nitrous oxide gas required is so small that it needs scarcely be taken into consideration. It may be used in small places where there is no supply of ordinary illuminating gas by substituting a carburetor furnished by the manufacturers of the blowpipe, which it is claimed will run it equally as well as coal gas. The process of melting platinum for dental purposes, recently devised by Dr. L. E. Custer of Dayton, Ohio, in which electricity is the active agent, is described by the inventor as follows. The production of heat by electricity depends upon two factors, the quantity of electricity and the resistance of the conducting agent. As the quality is increased, the heating power is augmented. But this power is not apparent until the current meets with some resistance. The unobstructed flow of any quantity of the fluid does not produce heat. It is only when there is placed in the circuit a poor conductor of electricity 
that we have this manifestation. All metals are comparatively good conductors of electricity, yet they vary in their conducting power, copper, representing one extreme <coughs> and German silver the other, <coughs> the size of the wires another, factor in the determination of heat. With a given length of wire, the resistance increases as the diameter of the wire decreases. In other words, a small wire has less carrying capacity than a large one, so that when the same amount of current that is easily conducted by a large one is forced through a small wire, resistance is met with and heat is produced. When a current has been established by bringing two terminals together, the electricity continues to flow even after the ends have been separated. It leaps an intervening space and forms a, a voltaic arc. The heat of the arc is so intense that it's practically without limit. The method herein described is devised for making and using the voltaic arc for melting metals, which are infusible at ordinary temperatures. The appliance is adapted to the 110 volt current, that which is used for incandescent lighting, and which is the ideal current for dental purposes. And under the, there's a one here. Silver is the best conductor amongst the metals, standing first in the list with copper second. The alloys are generally poor conductors. A large quantity of current being necessary, the safety plug should be as large as number 16 or 18 standard gauge. A resistance coil of 8 pounds of number 18 copper wire will prevent fusing the plug at the same time give a large arc. This is placed at a convenient point in the circuit. It becomes heated and should be insulated and ventilated on asbestos if used for a considerable length of time. <coughs> a block of carbon, such as is used in batteries, is connected with one wire for the receptacle and a carbon pencil is attached to the other wire. Carbon, <coughs> carbon is used for the receptacle, carbon is used for the receptacle because it is conductor of electricity. A poor conductor of heat is non-combustible and can be easily fashioned right hand. Oh, it can be easily fashioned to mold and mold the melted metal. The carbon pencil is to be used by the right hand. It is made of electric light carbon, five or six inches long. A hole is drilled two thirds into length, its length. And then this hole is inserted the other terminal wire. This wire is so insulated that only the end comes in contact with the carbon. By this arrangement, the upper two-thirds of the pencil, although charged electrically, does not become heated and answers for a handle. The platinum is laid on the carbon bed and the pencil is brought in contact with it. Immediately there is a current established from the pencil through the platinum to the carbon bed or vice versa. Upon raising the pencil, short distance an arc is formed directly upon the metal and is melted. The arc can be carried about at will until the pieces are all brought into one mass. <coughs> Dr. Custer, number one, Transactions National Dental Association, the Dental Association, 1898. Dr. Custer, 1898. Found by later observation that when platinum is melted in this way, it, makes, it takes up carbon during the melting process, and the result is similar to that which occurs when soft iron becomes heated or fused in contact with carbon. In the same way, platinum takes up carbon and becomes very much like iridoplatinum. To retain the softness and ductility of platinum, it must be kept away from carbon. He therefore substitutes a block of lime for the carbon and instead of using a piece of electric light carbon in the hand, he employs a platinum pointed piece of metal about three quarters of an inch in diameter with which an arc is struck upon the platinum scraps. There being no carbon present, platinum melted by that process is 
as soft and ductile as it is possible to get it. Stop here.